So in my presentation, I will tell you um, about the program that we have uh, at TISA uh, for uh, moon uh, related to moon activities. I will tell you a bit how we build uh, our program, how we select the projects. Then uh, I uh, will list all the projects that we have currently in our pipeline and tell you a little bit about the plans uh, for the future. Well, um, the European uh, Exploration Envelope Program is a program that we have in um, the uh, Human and Robotic Exploration um, uh, Directorate of the European Space Agency. In this program, uh, we uh, implement uh, experiments for uh, um, the International Space Station, but further away from the Earth, uh, uh, we also um, use the um, Lunar Gateway as a platform for uh, science, as well as we um, um, implement experiments on the moon surface and experiments uh, towards uh, Mars. Uh, the European Exploration Envelope Program um, lies on two major pillars, the expert program and the science space program. The expert program is uh, um, the program that we have uh, at ESA for uh, developing uh, key technology, enabling technology for uh, our uh, projects. Uh, is within uh, the expert program that we run mission studies and uh, mature the um, technology readiness of the um, enabling technology. In the size space program, uh, well, we develop the, the full uh, missions, uh, the projects, and it's within the size space program that we um, start from phase A uh, down to the launch of the mission itself. Um, the size space program uh, structure relies on three major uh, containers. So we do experiments in the physical sciences domain, in the life science domain and in the planetary sciences domain. Uh, the, um, the Safe Space uh, program um, wants to foster uh, innovative and world class uh, science research. It wants to help to deliver solution to challenges uh, that we see on the earth and to, to, to support European industry and uh, economy at the same time preparing for a responsible and sustained human and robotic uh, um, exploration. Uh, how do we build uh, our program? Our program is uh, built by following a bottom-up uh, approach. So uh, first of all, we um, we um, open um, a call uh, for ideas towards the scientific uh, community. A few years ago, we had an open call for uh, white papers uh, to which uh, the scientific community replied with uh, uh, scientific uh, um, uh, thematics uh, to be investigated uh, on the various uh, platforms I discussed before and uh, experiments to be uh, performed. Well, uh, all uh, these um, white papers uh, uh, are now uh, being published in a special issue on APJ uh, microgravity. And based on these white papers, we build uh, um, our um, scientific uh, program um, uh, for the moon. Uh, well, I'm listing here the uh, major um, scientific, um, uh, scientific subjects uh, which came out of the fundamental physics uh, white paper and the astrophysics uh, white paper, which are the two uh, white papers which are uh, uh, more related to what we are discussing here. So the first uh, big... Uh, big um, uh, topic is uh, Einstein's equivalence principle uh, tests. Uh, the idea here is to use laser ranging uh, experiment to the moon uh, to, uh, to test uh, both the strong and the weak equivalence principle, but also to perform uh, measurements, uh, precision measurements of the PPN parameters, uh, estimate uh, G dot over G, search for uh, Yukawa-like um, uh, potentials. 
but also uh, we will be testing decoherence uh, models on couples of entangled photons. And here the idea is to operate quantum links on the Earth to Moon baseline to study uh, decoherence effects uh, due to the fact that the photons are climbing uh, through a, a highly varying of a gravitational potential. In the cosmology domain, um, the, the idea is mainly to investigate the origins of primordial fluctuations and uh, the existence of a primordial uh, black holes by um, using uh, radio interferometers uh, and uh, using gravitational wave um, uh, detectors. Um, Another important topic is uh, cosmic rays uh, studies, in particular cosmic rays distribution in the solar system. Here, uh, the idea is to um, place uh, cosmic ray detectors uh, measuring fluxes and spectra on uh, most of the space probes uh, going uh, out there. In the, um, in the domain of solar uh, physics, uh, uh, the idea is also to investigate the surface magnetic fields uh, and long wave radio emissions uh, from the corona by using uh, radio telescopes. And last but not the least, uh, plasma physics. Also here, we can upload the small plasma packages, uh, UV and uh, energetic and neutral uh, atom images um, on uh, different probes or perform uh, uh, radio science uh, um, experiments. <clears throat> Um, well, uh, uh, after the, the, um, the, the main uh, thematics that we want to investigate, in particular uh, uh, to the moon, a few words on the way we uh, select the projects. Uh, well, uh, um, based on the inputs of the scientific community, we then issue uh, announcement of opportunities to which a scientific community uh, replies uh, with the uh, mission proposals. The mission proposals are then peer reviewed and uh, enter uh, our pool of research projects from which we um, um, implement missions to the moon. And here in this slide, you see uh, the uh, projects that uh, will be implemented short term until 2025. Uh, first of all, uh, an exosphere mass spectrometer, which uh, in, uh, within this year will fly on NASA uh, clips. This is an ion trap mass spectrometer that we will use to detect uh, lunar uh, volatiles. Then we want to also fly the land X technology with a commercial uh, lander uh, again in 2023. Here, the idea is uh, to test the camera to improve the precision and the safety of um, uh, future lunar landings. Um, I was mentioning before the experiment uh, on the laser uh, retroreflector, uh, Moonlight, which will fly on NASA clips in 2024. Uh, here again, the lunar laser ranging will be used to uh, test general relativity and to study the moon uh, interior. Then uh, uh, next project we have in the pipeline is uh, ion uh, detector, uh, which uh, will uh, take measurements at the lunar surface. The um, experiment will go up there with, uh, in collaboration with the um, Chinese National um, uh, Space Administration. Then uh, the, uh, again, an exosphere mass spectrometer, which uh, as you have heard in the previous meeting will go on the Lupus, Lupex uh, rover with the uh, JAXA in 2024, 2025. Uh, then we are uh, uh, working hardly, hard working on uh, on the lunar pathfinder um, um, lunar pathfinder package, which is a commercial uh, communication and navigation uh, service around the moon. Here we will test uh, different technologies. Uh, last but not least, uh, um, uh, the prospect. Um, hardware, which will go on NASA clips in 2025. Here, proceed uh, will drill beneath the surface of the South Pole uh, uh, region, and it will extract the samples that will be then analyzed by Pro SPA Chemical um, uh, Laboratory. 
Um, now, uh, how about the lenders' capabilities? Um, as you can understand, uh, for the moment, uh, we are uh, uh, uploading uh, uh, our hardware uh, in collaboration with other space agencies, with China, with JAXA, with um, uh, NASA. Several lenders uh, are um, available. In the last uh, uh, announcement of opportunity, uh, the one we had in 2022, uh, we um, uh, defined some guidelines in terms of mass, volume, and uh, power consumption uh, to uh, give the scientists an idea of the resources which would be available uh, on board these uh, lenders. Of course, these are only uh, ballpark numbers because we will have to share the resources with the international uh, partners, and of course, uh, the uh, utilization of um, uh, resources will be uh, the result of uh, uh, discussions and barter agreements with uh, uh, other um, space um, uh, agencies. Uh, how about uh, our uh, future plans um, for the moon? Uh, we have already started an intense uh, development for, uh, um, for the exploitation, uh, scientific exploitation and uh, exploration of the moon. Uh, ESA is indeed involved uh, in the development of the European service module for um, uh, the Orion, Orion um, uh, capsule. Um, we uh, have started the, the development of the European large logistic um, lander, and uh, we have uh, in the pipeline the development of two major uh, uh, modules for the lunar uh, gateway, high hub and uh, Esprit. Uh, ESA's uh, future plans for the moon uh, have been confirmed uh, um, at the end of uh, 2022 at the last uh, uh, ministerial uh, council. At the last ministerial council, we had the go ahead for, uh, um, for continuing with the development and the support of the Artemis program with the European service module, which provides power and propulsion to the Orion uh, spacecraft. Uh, well, the first uh, European service module uh, was already successfully launched in November 22, and it was used to po power uh, Orion in uh, an amend mission uh, around the moon. As I was saying before, we had also the go-ahead for the um, development of the IAB and the Sprit modules. IAB uh, uh, is a module which will provide uh, astronauts um, habitat on the moon gateway. A Sprit uh, is a module which will provide refueling infrastructure and the communication. Last but not least, and this is an important uh, uh, development for, uh, for the moon uh, exploration and for scientific uh, experiments uh, after 2030, that's the Europeans, uh, um, European Large Logistic Lander, Argonaut, which will be capable of routinely um, dispatching uh, payloads and cargo uh, to the moon. It has a very large uh, uploading uh, capability up to 1.5 uh, tons. And uh, uh, according to our plans, uh, should be operational after uh, 2030. Um, until uh, 2030, as I said before, its uh, payloads uh, will have to be launched on a number of commercial lenders in collaboration with the NASA, with JAXA, and uh, uh, with the Chinese uh, Space uh, Administration. Now, um, a few words about the phase, uh, the way forward that we could foresee for the lunar gravitational waves um, uh, detector. Um, ESA, with that respect, can offer uh, several means to incubate study ideas, and in particular to elaborate uh, mission uh, concepts and advance the, the critical uh, technology uh, to mature it towards um, a, a the readiness for, for flights. 
uh, for flight. As a first uh, uh, mean, there, are, there is the topical team um, um, tool that we have at TISA. Um, the topical team is nothing else than a, a working group, which includes uh, experts from European universities, research uh, entities and uh, institutes, which uh, are there to um, uh, develop research around the areas, uh, areas of focus for the HRE uh, program. This is clearly particularly uh, suited for LGWA to start um, to uh, develop a mission concept. Uh, to start defining um, uh, the scientific requirements and then the, the instrument uh, requirement, and of course, prepare for the next phase, which would be um, a real uh, uh, mission study, a feasibility study, which can be conducted uh, uh, with um, ESA help by using a concurrent design facility uh, tool. Uh, the concurrent design facility tool is nothing else than uh, uh, an environment in which we have the possibility to interact in, uh, in situ with uh, uh, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, with scientists, uh, propulsion engineers, uh, with experts uh, from uh, orbits uh, and so on, to define uh, the mission design, to identify um, a mission architecture and to uh, make a first estimate uh, of the costs. Uh, so this goes in the direction of uh, um, uh, study the feasibility of the mission in itself and prepare also the scientific community to uh, future announcement of opportunities. Um, oh, here the, the good uh, news is that the uh, science team uh, um, uh, has already submitted uh, both a topical team proposal and a CDF study, uh, which are currently under uh, evaluation within uh, um, ESA. So you will soon uh, hear uh, about that. Okay, this was my uh, last slide. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention and sorry again for um, uh, the delay uh, in, uh, in the schedule. Yeah, are there any questions? Uh, yeah, thank you for this uh, presentation. I, I have a question about um, communication um, um, between Earth and Moon. So the, 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 you mentioned that also on one of your slides, but so when can we expect like a permanent, um, you know, GNSS type system um, at the moon. When when is this expected to 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 happen? And I guess this is probably also the product of some international collaboration. I don't know, but um, is there is there a plan inside ESA to 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 establish such a system? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, okay. The, the... At the moment, uh, uh, there's no uh, plan casting stone, but what I can say is that within the expert program, we are developing technology uh, for that, uh, and we are working close collaboration with the navigation uh, uh, directorate to um, establish an architecture for a future uh, uh, GNSS system uh, around the moon. Uh, so uh, yes, we the, the, the answer is uh, we are working uh, on, uh, on that, uh, in terms of timeline, uh, well, uh, I don't have an answer, unfortunately, right now. Uh, you had mentioned, uh, I think it's called a moonlight, uh, which had a, just carrying a lunar laser reflectometer. Um, yes. And do you know, is that something that is where the laser is going to be in orbit or is it from ground, from Earth? Uh, the moonlight experiment uh, foresees a corner cube re retro reflector plus a pointing uh, mechanism which uh, will be installed on NASA clip. So um, it will provide only the, the capability of orienting the, the, the retro reflector to maximize the laser returns. But uh, the laser ranging experiments will be uh, performed by firing from the Earth by using the standard uh, 
satellite laser ranging stations that we have there. Thank you. So there will be no laser or not. Got it. Yeah, thank you. Um, hi, thank you very much. Um, so I think there was also a white paper or request of information more on focusing on the uh, science of the moon um, to understand the moon itself better. So can you also comment on, on this aspect too, now that um, we learned that we should understand the moon better? Um, well, uh, yes, indeed, uh, and uh, I can also add that uh, there is uh, the, the, there is already a topical team which is uh, I started working uh, in uh, in that direction. On top of that, uh, uh, we have received already in the announcement of opportunity the one of uh, 2022 several proposals which are going exactly in that direction uh, studies uh, uh, with different instrumentation to understand uh, the moon uh, interior. So I, I expect uh, already today and uh, for the future years uh, there will be an intense activity uh, on, that, uh, on that topic. Uh, there's no doubt on that. And from his uh, side, we will uh, strongly support that. I'm not sure the white paper now is published uh, yet because uh, the, um, the white papers, as I said before, they, uh, they will be published on MPJ microgravity. I'm uh, pretty sure that the fundamental physics one is already available uh, uh, online. The others, they will be published uh, in the coming, uh, coming weeks. But uh, I mean, uh, we, we, we are, uh, the papers are there. So it's uh, simply a matter of uh, finishing the, um, the peer review process uh, to get it published. Okay, uh, any more questions? Uh, okay, if there are no questions, uh, thank you.